Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Tatiana. Welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you, Don. Thank you for having me. Yes. Okay. So we, you had my heart at astrology, but we have to go back a little bit. You do, you are smarty pants. So you are a um, professor of physics still currently. I actually changed jobs about six or seven months. So oh. I am no longer a professor. I used to be for 20 years and it felt a little bit too stagnant. So it kind of links to my whole life path, but we'll circle back later. On okay. That okay. Perfect. Jobs. Yeah. Well, and I like how you called it a midlife checkpoint. I love that term. That is so perfect. So you went through this midlife checkpoint. Oh, wait, I wanted to ask you, what sign are you? Okay. So if you're asking about my sun sign, that yes. will be Leo. Leo. Okay. Interesting. Leo who likes to tell stories and entertain audience. So thank you very much for that opportunity. My <laughs> inner Leo is delighted. It's jumping up and down. Great. Yeah. I was really curious about that. I have always loved astrology and I'm one of the people, you know, that would read a horoscope and think that that was just for me, <laughs> even mm -hmm. though, you know, there's a million of us out there, but, um, I love it. So you were teaching hardcore into your science background, and then you decided to make a switch and go to astrology. How did you decide what kind? Like, I didn't even realize that there were so many kinds of astrology. Oh, my. <laughs> I started reading on the side astrology so many years that I barely remember how it all started. Okay, okay. I vaguely remember that it was something about me trying to disprove something um, that there was, you know, there are a lot of stories and some things make sense and others don't make sense. Yeah. And it, the proof is in the pudding and so there are a lot of interpretations. And so vaguely I remember around 2000, my husband sent me this little um, quote, I think, blurb from social media. He said, that doesn't make sense. Someone has made predictions about the end of the world. I remember those, that the 2000 year bug. Oh, Y2K, <laughs> Y2K, yes. Oh, yes. And my mom was hoarding cans of spam. <laughs> I know. And I remember in, on... December 31st, I went to the store for last minute groceries and they had those signs that said, when you wake up on January 1st and you find out that the world is still here, we will not accept returns on those huge cases of, toma of canned tomatoes and beans. <laughs> right. People did. It was scary. Yes. Yes. And so, and my husband and I are both physicists by training, but I have always had interest in the fields beyond the science, beyond the physics, um, spiritual thought, Eastern philosophy, Western philosophy. And so knowing that I kind of straddled that uh, boundary, he, show, he sent me that little blurb and he said, what do you think of that? Is it really true? <laughs> and of course, that little thing, I don't even remember what it was, but I remember that there were a lot of astrological readings. And this is why I've always been open to astrology, even though I, I started with a little bit of skepticism as like, okay, hold on, let's go check carefully what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, but this is where the scientist in me said, hey, you cannot judge something if you don't understand the language. So I started for purely academic reason, at least as far as I remember back then, 20 yeah. more years ago. Right. Um, I remember that feeling of let's go learn what is that sun? What is the Mars and Venus uh, or and Venus in Pisces retrograding? Wait, 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 wait. So I approach it as a new language and being skeptical, or maybe this is where a scientist again in me says, okay, you're not going to get that information from the back of the newspaper. Let's <laughs> hunt for some reputable <laughs> sources. And this is how doubtful I was and mistrusting. I did not trust any modern sources. So I dug something from at least a century ago. So I told myself, look, if it's not, if it's from 20th century, maybe it's right, maybe it isn't. I don't know how to judge it, but let's see what has survived through the centuries. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that is how it all started. And because I was very careful to select things that would appeal to my scientific senses, 
I ended up actually with a sense of that astrology was the, the, the science of cycles, of things that are coming and going, coming and going. And that appealed to my physics training. Um, I have a degree in astrophysics. And so I was saying, hey, I've seen that. <laughs> Earth goes around the sun, moon goes around the earth. There's nothing far-fetched about that. And that's what, and also on a, on a certain level, astrology is like that. Only it says that you're, if you're tracking your emotional well-being, it will be up and down. Mm -hmm. If you're building something in this world in terms of career and achievement in a material sense, it will be in a cycle. So this is how I actually very gently eased into the field of astrology. I, I was in before I even realized wow. <laughs> that. Did they go, did they yeah. go together? Physics and astrophysics? I mean, besides, I know you just said about the planets, but is it scientific just like that? Yes, it is. But here's the kicker. I said, okay, well, why am I the only one doing it? Actually, I know other people too, but there's a lot of, I don't know, stigma. I don't know why for some reason we ended up with this very strong opinion that science and astrology do not mix. But if you dig deeper, and I've dug centuries back, and Johannes Kepler, who actually set up the celestial mechanics, and every physics student learns about Kepler's laws in the first five weeks of their first physics class, he was actually a practicing astronomer and astrologer. He was paying the bills by writing astrological, giving astrological readings to some king. That's how he was pay, paying the bills. Wow. And he set up those laws. So if you look at his laws, there's nothing controversial. Um, NASA uses them. This is very, very classic physics 101 or celestial mechanics 101. And I have no idea why and how somewhere from four or five centuries ago when he lived up to here how this division division occurred thank you um not only it's division it's a big division but i have felt intimidated to mention it that i do astrology in scientific circles because a lot of times i feel like they would not even give me a chance to explain I can explain in scientific terms, but I, what you're giving me, I haven't, I haven't had that within the established scientific right. circles. So I have learned to be very careful. There are many people who are open. I don't want to dismiss all the conventional sure. science, uh, but for some reason, there's this very loud minority that is very judgmental and very quick to wait in and dismiss you before you have you have had the chance to say a b c wait <laughs> yeah right they wouldn't even wait for me to say kepler and they'll be like it's over <laughs> so i don't i think they're a tiny minority but because they're so loud majority of us tend to keep to ourselves I mean, yeah I've been a physicist for over two decades and i started saying it only in a few years years ago and it's more like in social media not in my classes <laughs> so and yeah there's a stigma that comes along with it almost like it's um like a witchcraft or mm -hmm. some voodoo or something like yes. that um so i love that you're so scientific but you're willing to delve into it to learn and then you're realizing it's not i thought i heard too that there were some like when you said he, he was reading for a king that I think it was in India, there was some country where they would have to have their charts read before they were allowed to marry to mm -hmm. make sure that like the stars and everything. And then the wedding day would have to have the planets doing what they're supposed to be doing. That is fascinating. Yes. I mean, that just shows that it, how, how far back it goes. Um, yes. And I think India is one of the places where they have had this tradition without any interruption. If you go to the Western world, you will see that this was very non-controversial um, up to, again, Kepler's time, somewhere in the Middle Ages. There's, And after that, it just split. 
But you know, here being a scientist helps me out because what I see is, in a sense, I can I can understand there was this big push in the Middle Ages to put some boundaries because things had kind of bundled so badly that there were so-called medieval scientists discussing whether women had a soul or how many angels oh, could no. sit on the tip of a needle. So you see the problem, right? Yes. So I can see how those those ancient those well those early scientists they waited in and said okay people hold on hold on let's just sort it out what we can test in life and see the world through those physical laws and let's keep the other for philosophical discussions so you're free to say whatever you want about the soul okay. or the angels so I, I that's that's how i made peace with that that trend but you can see it even within the science, the sciences. For the last couple of um, hundreds of years, physics and chemistry split and biology split, and there was a lot of splitting. But what I've seen in the past 10, 20 years, if you go to a, to a university, departments are emerging that are biochemistry, chemical physics. Yeah. And, and now some of it is actually merging with computer science. They're going into that robotics and AI. But to me, on a very philosophical abstract level, I see merging back. So that's my permission to say, hey, I think that within several decades, there'll be many people like me who would see that astrology is a science. There are predictions that you can go there, put them to a test and see what it is. Mm -hmm. There's no need to be dismissed anymore, but we're still battling some inertia. I call yeah. it mental inertia. <laughs> right. Well, and also a lot of the books that I've read, more of like the self-help type, mm -hmm. they, the books I've read recently have brought up quantum physics. Mm -hmm. So then I'm sitting there reading, I'm like, oh, look at me. I'm so smart. I'm reading about quantum <laughs> physics, but that's another kind of metaphysical ish, you know, like people that seems woo woo too. And yes, it's actual yes. science. So it's fascinating how it's kind of starting to, I like okay. it. I like it because the quantum physics was developed almost a hundred years ago in the 1930s. And it has almost, we took it and we use it for practical applications. But the implications of how entangled our existence is, how the objective, the, the very question of what is objective and what is material, we kind of, as a scientist, we tend to put it a little bit, mm -hmm. sweep under the rug. And I, I welcome this waking up to all of a sudden this, this fact that it's not from Eastern mysticism or some woo-woo, as you called it. It's just here under our noses. Um, I've argued with some people from the sciences, friendly argument, when they said, well, I, I like to, to deal with the material world, has to be solid, you knock on the door, it's very solid. And I challenged them because anybody who has taken a quantum mechanics course in the physics department, in the university, the quantum mechanics says the electron doesn't exist the way you think. There's nothing solid about it. So right. I like to kind of poke around those sciences who get a little <laughs> bit too much into the like, solid. What is that woo-woo? And I'm like, all right, let's talk about now how solid the electron is. <laughs> right. Well, and it's funny too that the people that are skeptics, they, they don't mind so much if they think it's like fortune telling, like with the election coming up. You oh, know, yes. oh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are like, what's the future looking like? What are the planets going to be doing? You know, it's like I know. they don't buy into it until it's relevant to them. I hear you totally. And uh, my biggest success is in converting people who, granted, they were open and they were friendly to me. I didn't start. There's some people <laughs> with whom the best thing is just to spot them and, as, and you tell yourself, it is not my job, right. someone else's job. <laughs> Let them be. It's a big world, right. free world. <laughs> Uh, but there were people who were extremely skeptical. They humored me because there was a friendly flow already <laughs> flowing. Right. And the biggest success is when I didn't want to convince anybody anything. But I said, hey, look, it's something about repetition. And that is, 
in the astrological chart we can do those calculations because they're based on astronomical calculations nasa uses the same astronomical calculations to launch astrologers take the same numbers and try to make a prediction so i made a prediction someone was having very difficult toxic relationship at mm -hmm. work with a female co-worker and things had escalated so badly that the person was very depressed and could not see any way out short of finding another job and so i said look i'm a beginner astrologer don't ask me for interpretation but i know my math and i can do the cycles so what i did is i went through the cycles and I looked at the dates and I said, okay, I have no idea, but for some reason, this cycle is ending in October. So he said, huh, we're talking about the company that nobody leaves, nobody gets fired. It's one of those big companies. Yeah. I don't even see how this is going to be. And I said, I don't know, but you're a scientist and I'm a scientist, so we get to wait. <laughs> so we waited several months and I totally forgot about my prediction. I was back then very uh, feeling newbie. <laughs> and I did not have confidence. I hadn't read for clients. And, and then this person comes back and she said, you won't believe what happened. And I said, what happened? <laughs> well, it's October, as you said. And today that coworker walked in and resigned from the job. And she said she had found a better job with more money and she's out of here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I got my first convert very <laughs> unintentionally. So from, from that day on, that person likes to ask, can you tell me? And, and again, my, my usual, um, view is always like that be careful with the interpretations that is where we get into trouble right yeah what would the election be who's gonna win the election uh i wouldn't go there right <laughs> but i can tell you and even as a human being and not an astrology person that there's a sense of newness i feel like whoever aligns with the new is gonna win Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> I just made a prediction, but that's kind of, I might be wrong. <laughs> so just to give you an idea how I like to read for my clients. And, um, and I had a very interesting story with one of my clients who I did something similar and I gave her that. And the, the focus is always on what can you do about it? Mm -hmm. if, you, if there's nothing you can do about it, it's curiosity and it's fun, but so we talked a lot about what she can do about herself and she was very happy with the reading but then she wanted apparently to go to someone professional with 20 years of experience and she went there and she got the reading with dates and time and specifics and then after some maybe a month or so she called me and she said you know tatiana i think i want to have a reading with you that guy was so good but what good is it to me to have all the dates five years down the road? You told me what to do tomorrow with my boss or with that upcoming presentation. Right, right. <laughs> Again, because my focus is really, let's make the best of it. You know, that lemonade out of the proverbial lemons. Yeah, yeah. As I, said, I like to shift the narrative because there's always an empowering angle. We are not victims. We tell ourselves. But other than that, there's a way to look at that and say, okay, let's make that lemonade. So all of a sudden <laughs> she went there for the exact predictions and then right. thought, well, what am I yeah, going to do with this? Yeah. What am I going to do with that? Yes. It's curiosity. Uh, it boggles the mind. Uh, I'm fascinated, but I still have to go to work and I still have a few <laughs> things with my coworkers. It's not practical <laughs> enough. Yeah. Uh, that so, makes sense. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So I did go to your website and I saw that you at least used to, I don't know if you still do, used to focus on Saturn where Saturn is in people's chart. Mm -hmm. So yes. why Saturn? Why Saturn? That's a very good question. Um, Saturn was the first symbol that I validated for myself. We all start the, the astrological books start with the sun, the moon, the ascendant, mm -hmm. but there's so much pressure saturn stands for restriction and at the time and i still do i practice an energy 
uh, healing art in the form of Reiki. It's very close mm -hmm. if you're familiar with Reiki. Yeah. Um, I call it Reiki gone to university and learn about meridians because it's more like you can place your hands and harmonize the energy along some meridians. So the Saturn, I linked the Saturn with some of the energy work I was doing. So I said, hmm, I wonder if I can do, I can come up with a tailored energy practice, self-help for myself that release, re, relieves me of that Saturn pressure of restriction and obstruction and discipline. This is where we have to do our work. There is no cutting corners yeah. for, for, uh, for Saturn. And I remember I felt tremendous relief. I did not cure myself of all my medical conditions. Right. <laughs> you know, for that we have doctors. But I felt like, oh my goodness, someone had taken literally a burden off my shoulders. And I said, huh, I, I shocked myself. I didn't expect that you can feel the energy work so physically in your body just because I tailored it a little bit to the Saturn from astrology. And that is how the, the Saturn started because I merged two disciplines. So there is my trend again to merge. Right. <laughs> and I started telling people if they came for astrological readings, I would say, are you open to some energy work on yourself in the form of yoga? A lot of times it's just simply holding fingers, uh, placing your hands and whoever was open, I would give them a tailored sequence to give them some relief of their Saturn pressures. And I started getting a tremendous feedback. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so and that's how I started. All of a sudden, when I started offering classes for some people, I Saturn was the natural entry. You address your Saturn and you feel the immediate relief. Even if you don't practice yoga or energy uh, arts, the very fact when I said I worked with some lady who was writing something and I said, well, you know, your Saturn's in, in Gemini. What that means is you will always feel tremendous pressure, insecurity, criticism around the concept of communication because Gemini is the ultimate communicator. And she was very impressed. She said, wow, that's how I felt. She was struggling, did not want to write her little paper. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but this is where also it helped me a lot as a coach because I saw how powerful that message is. The moment you recognize that there's a symbol in that chart. You're not a victim. It serves a purpose. The purpose of Saturn is to force us to go through the steps A, B, C, D. Do not cut corners. You have to do your work. There is no cheating. And the best part that I love about Saturn is that your reward is guaranteed. It, there's no, oh, I didn't do it so well. Oh, someone else was clever than me. Saturn doesn't care about cleverness. Saturn cares only about did you show up? Were you present? Did you do your best? There's your reward. Nobody can take it away. So we were able to create this very empowering narrative for her where she, she, was got, she got so excited. She said, okay, now I understand and I can go back and finish my writing because this is part of my process. And she was looking for it down the road, how she will become that teacher. Mm -hmm. I guess Saturn is a teacher, but it's also teaching us to become teachers because you can teach only what you have struggled to learn. If something came very easy to you, you would not be able to relate to everybody else. Right, right. That is why our inner teacher, we go through that. I don't know why. Oh my, I'm not very good. But one day you wake up, you still feel like less than, but everybody comes and say, you're so good. Can you teach us? And you know the steps, you know where the pitfalls are, how hard the work is, and you become the teacher. So I, I love it. And I feel like it's the easiest way for me to enter astrology when I teach classes or even when I work with a new client because remove the pressure, empower the person. There's no more comparison competition right this person is smarter this person look at how easy they you know this comes to them well yes they don't have sat on there they learned that lesson now you're learning it <laughs> gosh that's fascinating okay i have five million questions but i'm going to try and remember two of them one of them is do you look up the properties of the sign that saturn is in like the characteristics of 
Pretend it's Taurus. If somebody said <laughs> asking for a friend, if somebody has Saturn in Taurus, the properties of Taurus are what come into play. And that's how you figure out what your blocks are. Yes. I, I picture Saturn as our brake, your car brake, the pedal for the brakes. Mars, a little side comment, Mars is your gas with its own downside. Yes. <laughs> but Saturn is your brake where you're very careful. You're seeing that speed bump. You're not going to go yeah. press the gas pedal. You're going to press the brake because otherwise it's not pleasant. Yeah. So understand what I've seen on myself, and this is I also try to teach it with to others, and they have validated it for me that just understanding that speed bump is coming. There is no more inner critic, hyper criticism. Okay. And so the question is, where are those speed bumps? Where is that journey going through? That is where the Taurus will come in. So which helps a lot. So we avoid all the super complicated advanced topics. <laughs> and yeah. everybody can go grab their chart, read about Taurus and start meditating. Those are my breaks. I have put them for a reason or the universe or my maker, whatever you, you want to say. There's right. a reason why. So what is the lesson? The lesson is that somewhere in our childhood, we use that energy too quickly, too rash, in a, in a, in a rushed and rashed way. Mm -hmm. And things didn't go well. Childhood, if you believe in reincarnation, could be you know connected to previous lifetimes. If you don't, that's okay. Most of right. us can actually connect to childhood experiences. I did this and it didn't work, and now I'm very reluctant. I put those um, brakes on me, and I don't want to do it. So, what is the Taurus? Taurus is very much in connection with the nat with nature with the intuitive sight of nature. Um, Taurus is the energy of growing, growing resources. It could be growing plants, mm -hmm. tending to animals, but it's growing resources because it's so much into, uh, it's actually the Taurus energy is where we are, we are recognizing that we are one with the nature, with the whole existence. And of course we'll be provided. That's what Taurus, the, the gift of Taurus is, you know, you'll be provided. Now nah, you went too quickly thinking that everything is there. And, <laughs> and now you're probably having some insecurity about, will I be provided? Maybe I should hold on to something. And that's when the, the, dis, the unbalanced Taurus can come. Uh, I'm having, letting go, uh, having troubles letting go of my possessions. Mm-hmm. Right. I have shoes from 20 years ago, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Or um, on the mental level, and this is where I can I can give you different options, but only you know where you'd like to play them. Do I they see. play on the physical? Do they play here? Here you can be also holding on to mental grudges having troubles holding on to this person hurt me i will never ever give them a chance <laughs> <laughs> it could be but i think the idea is once we become more aware of that break in tours the the lesson here is to say just go slowly but do your lesson don't avoid it otherwise you'll be presented with those lessons over and over right <laughs> That's right what the teacher says so we say, okay, what can I do with Taurus? Well, Taurus can help you see through the real value of everything that supports you from material house, furniture, shoes, clothes, cars, to people around you, holding on to those people. Some people may be outdated. <laughs> mm. I helped the person with very strong Taurian energy. She didn't have Saturn. She had other elements in Taurus. And in the last two years, she finally started um, letting purging her social media friends. She said, there are people I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> she killed them for years and they serve no purpose. <laughs> uh, so she went through this crisis of 
maybe you should let go. There's no hard feeling. This is social media. This is not my neighbor or my friend. I'm not going to hurt their feelings. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like they don't even realize you've dropped them. Yes. But Taurus likes simplicity. So I think this is also um, an encouragement to tap into the nature and let it unfold that simplicity. And again, Saturn is simply there saying slowly. Don't go and give up all your material possessions. <laughs> Don't hoard onto everything. <laughs> but go and if something doesn't bring you joy, let go of it. Give it to someone else. And ask mm -hmm. yourself, what, what, is my, what is the true value of this item? Even a better question, what is my value and what I value? That's where Taurus is. I like to work a lot on the mental attitudes because once we sort them out there, the physical comes much easier after that. Gosh, that's just fascinating. The, the other question that I was, and you may not have the answer to this because it is so old, but how do the, how do the planets get a personality or how, you know, that I get the cyclical part of it, yes. but how do you know, like, okay, well, when Mars is in this sign, that's usually that when this happens, like, cause Mars is the sign of this, like, how did the planets get a personality? I don't have a good question for you. <laughs> I have some guesses, but I don't know how good that will be for you. Um, for the energies, the way that I view them and the way they speak to me, the energies are not just some Taurus is nature and Aries is about protecting okay. and standing your ground. Um, the way they make sense to me is that is through the numbers. So the okay. way I see it, the sun goes around the earth. Well, we go around the sun, but from our self-centered point of view, right. <laughs> we sit here and the sun goes around <laughs> us. So if you, if you follow the sun from the spring equinox, when the spring starts, um, you practically divide the sky into 12 parts. And you count the first one. Well, what do you need for the first one? The first one is always me, me, me. Right. The second one likes to now pause and, you know, unpack a little bit and say, well, what do I need here? Second one is all about resources. That's where the Taurus comes into, like, I like my money. I like my simplicity. I like to chill. Mars, uh, I'm sorry, Aries. Did they, did they say Mars? I think I meant Aries. Aries did all the job all the you know swords waving now it's time for rest that's why the second number two you can call it whatever you want we call it Taurus. it's rest and then you say okay i've rested now you're restless i need to do something with my mind and there's gemini gemini the communicator so i can go through the entire circle of the 12 and it it, it, it paints a very interesting and very natural story of Okay, I'll go and talk and chit chat with my neighbors, but now you know what I've had enough. Let me go home in my cozy bed and chill. And that's cancer <laughs> for you, right? It likes all that nesting. Yes. <laughs> um, and then I've nested enough, so it's time again for out there to have fun. So but it's a little bit more mature areas. Areas before was like I'll go on every adventure. Now Leo will be like, nah, I'll pick and choose only the ones I like and bring me fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you had your fun. Maybe you wanted to paint, but then then um the Virgo steps in and it's like, yeah, but someone has to wash you paint brushes and that's where the Virgo goes with the tidying up <laughs> it's yes. all fun to paint but who cleans up after you so <laughs> it becomes the story of of your sure. life right yeah. and once you understand this 12-step cycles you can actually apply it to every part of your life how do you look for a new job well the first thing is you have to find the moral courage to say yes I can do it <laughs> I know I had to go through that part myself yeah. um, because I almost I kind of pivoted. I was teaching professor and now I'm an administrator. So I had to convince someone that I can do it. <laughs> uh, so and it yourself. A, yes. And it, there was a lot of pep talk, but astrology helped me a lot because I told myself this is a process and you can approach any process with those 12 energies. 
Mars to say, I can do it. And Taurus to say, okay, now what do you need? You need a resume, you need rec letters of recommendation. Right, right. And Gemini says, yeah, but we have to polish that resume because, you know, <laughs> doesn't <laughs> sound right. <laughs> <laughs> then I don't know what cancer. Cancer probably would have been sitting at home, me sulking and, you know, stomping. My poor <laughs> husband had to see all that. It's like, nobody likes me. Nobody wants me. <laughs> what does he think about you being in astrology? Um, he was my, the person that I mentioned earlier with the mm -hmm. toxic coworker. So he was my first convert in a sense. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Yes. Um, he was the one who said, wow, amazing. <laughs> so nowadays I have more self doubts. Thank you, Saturn. Right. Okay. Am I good enough about that? <laughs> Am I all imagining it? And he says, what do you mean? you did it and and he has very strong taurian energies so feet on the ground is like relax you are still grounded you make sense you haven't yeah. gone there <laughs> so i owe it to him actually to have that strength to finally find my job put my stories out there and even open business to to read for clients he started it in the beginning i was frustrated with my job i like my job and that's why i was frustrated because i didn't understand if you like it why are you not happy everybody likes you why are you not happy things are working why are you not happy um and cutting the story short he, one day he challenged me he said just have you thought of make you know creating your own business <laughs> it's been a long process but again you can see the pattern with areas you have to say i can do it i can yeah. open business and then second is oh what do i need you know if you're a hairstylist you need a place a sal you know a salon yeah. i go for my house or some other place all the resources then gemini will be like how do i advertise it how do i tell people how do i yeah involve their curiosity so there's a whole so that's how i envision the 12 energies in astrology they're really someone in the ancient times some wise person Put it up for us and it goes through the numbers for me That's as far as the planets go i have i don't think i have a good idea yeah. <laughs> well did you use google or were you using like old school encyclopedias like to because to delve way back how did you do that um there are a couple of books on amazon from um authors who lived in the 90, late 19th centuries okay and I started with them. It helped me because I liked to read Buddhist texts, texts mm -hmm. and Indian and the Hindu books, as you said, they, as you mentioned, they, they have that uninterrupted tradition. So mm -hmm. they never even went through a stage where they have to apologize <laughs> or explain. Yeah, they were like, finally, um, you're catching up. <laughs> So I already had a little leads through my philosophical books. So I had to go through my philosophy books to see who mentioned. Remember, it all started because someone was using the astrological language. Mm -hmm. And then you discover that even Pythagoras used the astrological language. Mm -hmm. And Pythagoras, I've always loved him. And I always had this admiration because, because of the math. I grew up thinking he's a mathematician. I didn't know he was a philosopher. I did not know he talked about astrology. To me, it's just the math that they teach us in school. Right. So, so again, it was that feeling of like, if it's good for him, who am I to <laughs> say it doesn't work? Um, so I already had a very deep motivation to go and explore in that direction and things just unraveled. But um, interestingly, in the last 20, 30 years, even in the astrological circles, there has been a trend uh, for going back to the Western roots. And they are, uh, there's a podcast, I think Chris Brennan was his name. There are a, a huge circle around him about um, classic astrology. I think okay. what, what they call it traditional astrology. Yes. Okay. To go back to what the, the Greeks did. I like it. But again, we have to pick and choose what we're going to take from the ancients, because the part for me is I like my empowering language. And if you read the ancient text, it's like you have Saturn here. Oh, you're going to break a leg. And I'm like, oh, oh my goodness, I'm going to break my leg now just because I'm so fearful. <laughs> 
So I like to make the best of both. So take the modern sensibilities and talk only in empowering terms. If you cannot lift up someone, you have no business saying anything. They cannot, mm. they're already, you know, suffering. You don't right, need to yeah. anything extra. <laughs> right, you're just kicking so, somebody when they're down. Right, my justification is you either empower or stay quiet. <laughs> Um, and so that part, I'm happy to clean it up from the ancient language because they literally did that. Someone is going to, you're going to die from a gunshot. <laughs> well, when they already had discovered that <laughs> in ancient Greece, not yet, but still. Oh my God. But I, I welcome that going back to the roots because it, it's simplicity. Mm -hmm. When it, Complexity is not necessarily better. I mean, you look, we talked only about Saturn and Taurus, and we already had a nice conversation. Yeah, I had a conversation with a physicist. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. I even I even had a whole conversation with somebody that's so intelligent. I just admire that about you so much and that you just continue to want to learn more. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, do not dismiss. Uh, I mean, I always try to point out to people that as a physicist and as someone who have had that inclination, I actually admire people with awesome people skills. <laughs> the fact that you are so open and you're working with others and so unapologetically you you put your podcast as let's have fun and we're going to find interesting stories. That I don't think that is in my world. That is actually rarity. So the, the the admiration is mutual. That is what I'm trying to say. Thank you so much for saying that. Can you guess what sign you think I am? Sun sign, I mean. But let me cheat and tell you that my sun, moon, and rising are all the same. Oh, they are? Hmm. Can I ask for one hint? Um, when you're very upset, I have a question. When okay. you're very upset, what activity or talking to a person or staying at home alone or reading or something, what is the thing that it invariably calms you down? It calms me down. Probably talking to people just to get my mind off of things. Oh, then I would say that you're probably some of the air elements if you like to talk and that calms you down, I would say Gemini is my first guess. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a okay. Gemini. So there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> As a, 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 did you notice that my question is the moon? Because we like to tell ourselves stories about I'm ascendant, I'm the sun, but somehow we tend to be proud of our emotions. When I'm angry, I like to tell you that. <laughs> um, when I'm angry, I like to stay in my room. I'm a Pisces moon. And we had to have a conversation with my husband because his moon is kind of borderline Taurus Gemini. So in our first years of our relationship, yeah. he would freak out because he said, well, let's talk it out. Let's talk it out. It's like, <laughs> give me space. <laughs> I get there anxious. And and every time when I've talked to someone, it was amazing that I was able to kind of put my finger and they say, how do you know? Isn't that what everybody does? It's like, no, we can easily <laughs> be broken into 12 tribes. <laughs> Isn't that so fascinating? It's all so fascinating to me, but you, you definitely educated me on so much that I did not know. I love it. I could just listen about it forever. I just think it's so <laughs> mind blowing, but... So tell people how they can find you if they'd like to get some of your life coaching. I have put everything together on my business website, which is called um, effortlessreality.com. And there they can actually find uh, one or two free self-help online classes. One of them is Saturn. So they can actually go through three or four emails every day. I'll they'll receive one from me with steps. Here's how you get your chart. Here's what your Saturn is. Obviously, it can be tailored if you want me to do what I did for you. It has to be an individual session. Yes. But I try to kind of simplify as much and as far as possible in a general setting, just to, to show people how much you can actually learn about yourself, even without working with someone else. 
of course, it's always better. I, I love working with other people. When I'm in trouble, I want to go find someone else to listen to me and point to my blind spots. Right. That's what I do for my clients. So yes, everything can be found on that website, effortlessreality.com. Okay, I'll put that in the show notes too. But Tatiana, I just had the best time talking to you. This was so great. I might want you to come back sometime and just talk some more. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, uh, Don. I enjoyed our conversation. Again, I admire people like you <laughs> reaching out. Those are the connectors, the curious people helping yeah. us, the scientists who tend to be a little bit over judgmental. <laughs> <laughs> it's a professional hazard, right? Occupational hazard for us. So I just wanted to emphasize how much I appreciate and how much I enjoyed our conversation. And yes, by all means, I'll be happy to come again when you, whenever you invite me. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. And good luck with your new venture, your new job in administration. Yes. Thank you very much. It's scary, but exciting. So thank you very much. All right. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.